Next, Mo, you're going to show us how to turn a boring mirror into a vintage dream. And first, tell us about the inspiration for this mirror. Yes, so this is the beautiful mirror that I pulled together. And it is really, it's giving anthropology vibes. Like, I'm loving it. And if you've seen the mirrors, they are gorgeous. But now you can make your own for less at home. Oh, I love that. It is gorgeous. Okay, so walk us through the first step. Yes. Okay, so first you want to go ahead and get some flowers. You can get them in craft store, dollar store. I went over and I got them. I even had some at home that I wasn't using anymore. So you get your flowers. Some may come on stems, and then you want to just pop them off. So boom, just remove them. Most of them are fairly easy to come off, so you want to do that. If you have ones that come in bunches like these, they are beautiful. I use them for the edging. Just get your uh, wire cutters and just snip them off and there you have them, right? So you go ahead and do that. Once you have all your flowers pulled together, you wanna go ahead and get them ready for painting. Oh, nice. Put these okay, would, you, would real flowers work for yeah. this DIY? And if they do, like, should you even use them or no, don't bother? Uh, no, I would, I would advise no, because we're gonna be using a glue gun as well, so you don't wanna ruin the flowers. And even if you use those, I don't even know what they're called, like the infinity flowers that last like a year, mm -hmm. still, I wouldn't suggest using it. Your best bet would be going with the faux flowers. Fair enough, okay. What's our next step? Yeah. So the next step will be painting our flowers. And so what I have here is a, it's an old cardboard box that I had and you could just use flat cardboard and be in a well ventilated area. I actually, the weather was beautiful. I went outside, I laid out the drop cloth just to be on the safe side. And then I spaced out the flowers within my box, gave, give them a good amount of spacing. I also suggest wearing some gloves as well and just taking your spray paint. I use this beautiful metallic gold spray paint and I spray them up, went to town. I use, I had my gloves on. So sometimes with these like peonies and roses, I find with them having these nooks and crannies in there, you really have to spend some time and spray. And while I have a lot of different colors here, I found of course the white was easy easiest to paint and the hardest were like the ones with the more pigments like the the uh, pink peony and whatnot the yellows were okay as well but be cautious of that okay and how many coats of uh, paint are we talking about here so I would say about three to four coats you would leave to dry especially for these ones with the color you're gonna need those coats to get that full metallic look beautiful okay so we've painted our flowers yeah, and gotten so really good in the yeah. nooks and crannies what do we do next Okay, so you know I'm big on placement before committing to a design. <laughs> so that's what our next step is. We're gonna go ahead and place our flowers. So I have all these different pieces here and you just go and spread them out accordingly and play around with it. You can even do this in advance. Like when I was first working on this project, I had, before actually painting them, I actually did the laying out as well. And I actually even fell in love with how it looked without the paint on it. But I'm a, I'm a neutral gal. <laughs> so in terms of longevity, I found that the gold would work better for me. So yes, you go ahead and just get those spread out there. And then you go ahead and take your hot glue gun and you go ahead and glue. Nice, so this is where you can take some time and make sure that you've got the placement down exactly as you like it. But I like the idea of exactly. setting, up, setting it up before you commit, very smart. Right, right. And I suggest using a heavy duty glue stick as well, not just your regular craft glue. So the ones that have that yellowish hint to it, you usually get these in your hardware store. Those are the ones that I suggest using because you don't want to have a situation where your beautiful mirror starts to fall apart. So you're looking mirror, mirror, all the wall, and then boom, it drops. <laughs> I think that would be a bad sign. Yeah, we're not looking for that. Okay. No, no we're not. Mm -hmm. So we've glued them all on. Yeah. And is this, this is the last yes. step, is it not? Or is there something else? This is essentially your last step. So you go ahead and get it glued on. You add as you want to. You fill it up as you want to. Go ahead and hold it up here, just so you see what I've done. Wow. And then you wanna hang your mirror. And so you can hang it. So this was a mirror that I ended up getting at the store. You can use do this project with an old mirror that you may have around the house. I know I have mirror trays that I may think I'm gonna use them for. Mm. And you can even do it with an oval shape as well. But you can also use to hang them. I love these damage-free hanging 
uh, command strips for these types of projects because again, you don't want to damage your walls <laughs> or put holes in them. So yeah, so there you go. Beautiful. Oh my gosh, that is so like super stylish, which is what Monique does. Yes. Thank you so much.